Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. This year I was planning to keep my reviews to just advanced copies and the newest of new releases, but I read this little book a few months ago and it stole my entire heart. Do you ever finish reading a book and think, oh, that was a me type of story? Gallant was one of those for me. I finished reading and wanted to fold myself into the pages and stay there, and I really appreciate stumbling across those kinds of books rather than genuine, perfect five-star reads. I will say now that I did give this book five stars, but it was for those reasons and the fact that the book hit so many of my niche interests rather than the quality of the story and the writing. An honest rating would be closer to 3.5 stars, so I am going to take that into consideration for this review. Gallant is a book where the entire plot is revealed in the book description. Our main character, Olivia, grew up in a school for girls with only her mother's journal, which documents a spiral into madness for company. She receives a letter that invites her to come home to Gallant, but no one is expecting her when she arrives. The house is full of secrets, including a crumbling version of the house behind a ruined wall that has unraveled generations of her family. Olivia's big decision is to choose where she wants to belong. I am not joking when I say that everything you need to know is in the synopsis. The story is relatively simple and I think this book stands as a great introduction to Schwab's young adult and adult works. The first 60% of the book takes place over a handful of days as the introduction to the characters and a detailed description of the house. More than any other author that I've adored, Schwab is able to create characters and side characters that stick with me long after I've read the last page. Olivia is one of the first mute characters that I've read about, definitely the first mute protagonist, and I adore how Schwab made Olivia's feelings and intentions known without sacrificing a thing. The house is the true main character of this book, and the story seems to be more focused on Olivia unearthing the secrets of the house and her family history rather than the points of conflict mentioned in the book description. The storyline is also a quieter, creeping kind of magic rather than the suspenseful horror that I was expecting. Shrub's prose truly shines with the description of the house, so it's beautiful without being overly flowery. We are introduced to the antagonist of the novel around the 60-70% to 70 mark, so I think you can tell that the bulk of the book's conflict is squished into a third of the pages. I think the final third takes place over one day or one evening, so the conflict of the plot moves swiftly and it really drew me in to the point where I couldn't put the book down. However, this book could have benefited from gaining the 100 pages that Addie LaRue didn't need. I think my biggest flaw with the length of this book is how the mystery unfolds. Um, as Olivia begins to piece things together, the answers are given outright, robbing us of the satisfaction of uncovering the mystery ourselves. The book really needed those extra pages, so some elements of the story weren't explained so explicitly and other elements weren't entirely unexplained. In summary, Gallant balances the heartbreak of losing a family with the warmth of finding a place to belong. Shrub shows how found family is fundamental to human nature and how sometimes you must fight death to survive. I gave this book 5 stars on Goodreads because I'm incredibly biased by anything that tells my niche interests, but an honest rating would be more like 3.5 stars. That is all I have to say about this little book. If you've read it, let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!